Calgary, Canada, famous for its livestock, its oil, its Calgary Stampede, and its friendly people, and the 1988 Winter Olympic Games. Canada Olympic Park is where they held the bobsled and luge competitions, and now with the introduction of skeleton, there is a third sport on the FIBT World Cup Tour. Welcoming to the opening race of the season, women's skeleton run number two here in Calgary. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tim Singer, along with world champion Michelle Kelly. The first heat took place a little earlier today. And some surprises and some familiar names, Michelle. That's what's so great is you see, you know, Noel from the U.S., Michelle Steele, who we're seeing here right now. They've been on tour for a long time. And to see them still being able to dominate some of the competition, what a great thing to see. The Australian. Running away from summer down under to take part in a winter sport, she's in fourth place. Here's a surprise, Elena Nikitina of Russia. You know, and now we've got the new blood that's that's coming out, and she's such a fast starter, it's amazing. I mean, she's doing starts that the men are doing, you know? It's, it's such a great thing for the sport to see how far we've come and how much the training that the women are doing and how it's really being applied to our sport. American Noel Pikes Pace, a former world champion and World Cup champion. She won the test event last year in Sochi. She was injured earlier this week, or a, an old injury flared up, but she held on to have a second place run just out of the lead. And she could barely walk a few days ago, so what a testament to her you know, strong work ethic and her desire to compete, to be able to come out here and be sitting in second place right now. Great Britain with a great tradition of Olympic skeleton. And in this Olympic year, Lizzie Arnold was the first down the track. No one could catch her, but she came through with a finish time of 57.59 and held on to the lead throughout the run. Pika's pace just behind her, then a good battle brewing at the moment for the bronze medal position, and then another slew of world champions, including Anya Huber and Shelly Rudman right behind them. Not a great first run for Canada with just a couple in the top 12, so that's a bit of a surprise. Maybe you shouldn't have retired, but <laughs> You know, and it, it was a bit of a surprise. I expected on our home track for the girls to do a little bit uh, higher in the placements, but it's really close. I mean, on a second heat, anybody can really move up. The free, you know, really the top nine or ten are, are in pretty close. It doesn't take much to make a few mistakes, and the whole leaderboard can drastically change. And they're going to be hungry. They've got the nerves out. Now it's time to set out. To They know this track. Just put down some solid runs. And that's what all the girls are trying to do today is just, you know, put out some solid runs and really try to move up in the standings. The athletes will compete in reverse order from their first run standings. So Lizzie Yarnell will be the last one down this track. As you see, the other ones, including American Katie Ulander, out of the top 10 for the moment, will try to make her way at least back into that spot. Ulander, a two-time World Cup champion. And the Canadians, the rookie Robin Thompson, the veteran Sarah Reed. Very possible that they could end up in the top five on this comfortable track, familiar to them when the day is done. So we get set for the start of the action. Warm afternoon here in Calgary with the temperature sitting at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It should cool down for tonight's two-man bobsled. But thank you so much for joining us for the women's skeleton. Here is Takeo Omakai, 20th place after run number one. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> Some tough names today to say. <laughs> I butcher as many as I get right, don't worry. And what a nice, pleasant surprise for this athlete to get into the top 20. She's newer to the sport. You know, she did take out her countrywoman uh, to get that top 20, but she That's is the here. Final <laughs> down, the last yeah, down. very exciting. dramatic, but good for her. Well, in case you're just joining us and missed our men's competition, World Cup Skeleton is staged in two heats, a total time competition. The clock on the lower right side of your screen is added on from their first heat time. During the Olympics and the World Championships, it's four heats. So that you talk about needing to be consistent. Now, she was quite late going into corner eight, something we haven't seen today. Most of the athletes are going in early and actually hitting uh, the entrance. But you know, you saw it didn't help her exit there. Half under cries. Well, this is all time that's going to bleed off of her speed as she's going down. But this is something that's going to be such a great experience for her, having that second heat, and she's going to do nothing but go from here. 58.93 was her first heat time. You see how this matches up quite a bit better. Six tenths of a second better. And that could be, you know, the track is probably getting a little bit harder, the ice, as it is getting a little bit cooler. But the conditions you know, should be the same for all the athletes throughout. Great for her to come out and have a faster heat than her first uh, 
first run down the track. That's the exit of Curve 8. It's a long straightaway into the Chrysler, and we see a lot of mishaps there. And you can see there, she lost that form coming up off the sled, but also bending the arms, all stuff that adds up. You know, you want to keep it nice and low on the sled, and you want to keep those arms straight. Anytime you have any part of your body outside of the sled, you're going to really start to affect your aerodynamics. No more than 10 minutes ago, we saw Martins Dukers win yet another World Cup bops or skeleton race for Latvia. Men are doing great. Men, Latvian bobsledders do great. But this is a newcomer to women's skeleton for Latvia. Leda Predaluna. She's going to have a bright future as well. They have such a strong program there. It's nice to see they're getting the women a little bit more involved and to have her on the World Cup with the second heat. That's great. It's a tiny little Baltic nation, but it does have its own track. Four-man bobsleds cannot compete there, but they have had World Cup skeleton and luge. And she started off well. Again, for these women, they need to be under that 550 start mark, which she did, to really put the pressure on the girls that are coming after. Three-tenths of a second ahead of the Japanese competitor here in the early going. It's been a smooth run so far for her. She's having some good entrances and exits. This is going to be really important again. Here we come to that all important corner eight. She got in clean. Got to come out here. Very good exit. She's letting the sled run a little bit of a skid, though. And then that movement of the body, the toe on the ice. She's going to have to try and stay off this right uh, left wall, pardon me. She didn't, but she didn't react too much. It shouldn't affect her a whole lot in the time. She's still in the lead, which is good to see. She's got to carry that speed. Making her way down to the finish, the Latvian will take the lead when we return to Calgary, the first of three, Great Britain. And there's that Latvian flag flying for Lelda Predaluna. Yeah, we could really see a lot of quick improvement from her. Get that sense. Her form is very good when she's not banging walls. <laughs> I mean, I know that's hard to say, yeah. but when she, I mean, she carries but she herself is. She's well low on, on the, the sled. sled. Yeah, it's just unfortunately here in the straight, she did get a bit of a skid. Her sled got a little bit away from her. She had to put out that leg, break that form. But the track does seem to be quite quick, like the men. I hate to say it, but we might so actually nice. see a track record go again once these top ladies uh, get a little bit farther down in the race here. First of three from Great Britain, Donna Creighton is getting ready up at the start. On course now, Donna Creighton of Great Britain, 18th place after the first run. The first of three from England, including Lizzie Yarnold, who leads the way after the first run. Donna's always an extremely fast starter. She just actually the same uh, start as her first heat, which is great. Oh, that hit again. It's really important out of one. You don't want to hit. It's going to start killing any velocity that you got off of that start. Every time there has been an Olympics in skeleton, Great Britain has won an Olympic medal. It's the only nation in the world that can make that claim. But Alex Hamilton Coomer did it in 2002, and Shelley Redmond in 2006, Amy Williams with the gold in 2010. That is rising to the occasion. And they moved. They went bronze, silver, gold. They right. moved up. It was impressive. And uh, unfortunately, this run's getting a bit away from Donna. She's making some mistakes, hitting walls. That's going to affect her time. I think it'd be very surprising if she's ahead uh, by the time we get to the bottom. It's just little errors. It's just a pretty sloppy run. She's not going to be very happy with this run. Just missed out on a spot on the 2010 Olympics. So maybe feeling a little pressure to make the team this year. Donna Creighton falling back one spot despite the fastest start time. She's three tenths of a second behind the Latvian. And it's hard. Sometimes you're on that sled, and as things start to snowball, you know they're happening, but it's you know it starts then to play into your mind. It's hard to keep everything together, and it just seems like that whole run got pretty much away from her right from that hit right on the very first corner. Again, that's what, what straight. kind of speeds there? You know, this is the thing. She's going sideways, and you need top speeds here. The girls want to be getting, you know, 122, 123. They really want to get those, push the envelope and get those top speeds. I love she how casually you say that. You, you <laughs> want to be going 70 miles an hour on a it's just what you want to do. an inch away from the ice. Why not? From New Zealand, Catherine Eustace is 17th after run number one. 
Believe it or not, New Zealand has a fairly long tradition now in women's skeleton and some good results. Is it uh, Twinette Stoddard? Yeah, she was at the last Olympics. Right? She, I remember she was in second place in a World Cup race in San Moritz after the first run. Yeah, you know, and great. They're always pushing and really, you know, again, for these athletes who don't have a track in their country, it's such a great testament that they're willing to travel around the world and give up their summer. Literally, they have basically two winter seasons to do what they love and for a chance to you know, have the dream of going to the Olympics like everybody, you know, is pushing to do. This is just the first of a whole series of races throughout the world leading up to the Olympics. After Calgary, they'll head to Cork City, Utah, Lake Placid, New York, then Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and back in Germany before Ooh, heading to Russia. Ooh, a late entrance there into Kreisel. That's going to put a lot of pressure on her body. You can hear her visor on the ice. And then that hit on the left. That's going to cost a little bit of time. How much, I'm not quite sure. We'll see here. It looks like she's bleeding time. 1400s at the last split, chasing down the Latvian. Catherine Eustace of New Zealand, will she take the lead? Yes, she does. The two-time world champion from Germany coming up in just a moment. So, Eustace in first place. That was really nice down at the bottom. And here she's, you know, you can see her body moving a little bit. She's just trying to be relaxed on the sled. Unfortunately, the sled started drifting to the left, and this gives her a late entrance into Kreisel, which is going to slam your head down on the ice. And we could hear her visor going through that strong pressure and coming out and just hitting on that left wall. <laughs> a lot of space there between the sled and the body. Not what you want, but you know what? Look at her smile. She's happy. She kept her spot, and that's all she can do right now, and just hope and pray that she stays in that spot for a while. Now getting set for Germany's Marion Thies, two-time world champion coming up in just a second here in Calgary. Track is clear for Marion Thies from Germany. Action continues here at Canada Olympic Park. Tim Singer along with Michelle Kelly and the athlete now who epitomizes the term mild-mannered. This <laughs> is Marion Thies, seemingly embarrassed each of the two times yes. she's won the world championship. Very humble athlete. I'm a little surprised she's this far back in Calgary, but her nemesis has always been her start. 571 is well off the pace. Very tough on a track like Calgary to make up that time. Marion really does a lot better on the tracks that are a bit longer, but she's also that athlete that surprises you. She can have a slow start, and yet she can still win races on tracks that uh, you don't expect it. So you never know with this athlete, but I am surprised she's so far back. I think she'll probably look to move up a few spots on this one. About the sport of skeleton, Marion T says a very simple quote. It may sound funny, but it actually makes a lot of sense. She says, it's not crazy, it only looks it. Because for those of you that are involved, it's very natural, it's normal, there's nothing scary about it. That's it. We don't find it's that crazy at all, and yet, you know, that's what everybody thinks. It's, just, it's a part of home for us, being on that sled, you feel comfortable, and uh, crazy to watch. I'll even admit some of the runs I've had, but uh, it's a second home for a lot of us on the sled. Well, no one, and I mean no one in women's skeleton, generates more speed down at the bottom when all things are equal. Great speed, 74.6 miles an hour for Marion Thies, who takes over the lead from Eustace by 13 hundredths of a second. And she'll be happy with that. She's kept her spot. And to do that was such a huge difference on the start times. It's just a real testament to that her, she can drive. She, like you say, she carries her speed and good for her. Believe it or not, despite being only in the top 15 or so today, as we take another look at her relatively slow start, she will be on the podium. No one doubts that. Yeah. When you get to some longer tracks, perhaps as soon as Lake Placid, we will see Marion Thies with the top three. And a great history for her in Placid. That's a track she slides very well at. She's dominated at a few different races on that track, so she's definitely track a threat when she goes there. The great international winter sports tradition of Switzerland is represented here in Skeleton by Marina Gilardoni. What's great about Switzerland is they have the Italian roots, the French roots, the German roots. They pick from all of their heritages <laughs> to have great skiers, skaters, hockey players, and sledders. You know, and here's another athlete that's up and coming. Great starting ability. She just showed that there again with a strong start. And once she gets a little more experience in some of these tracks, she's going to be a real threat in the future. And, you know, as we spoke uh, earlier today, great history there with Maya Pedersen being such a dominant slider for so many years on the World Cup. And now there's a bit of a void, and here we go with uh, the next generation, and it looks very promising.
And I do stand corrected from an earlier statement because Switzerland has won at least one Olympic medal in each of the Olympics, thanks to Gregor Stalli, yes. who has, has won a handful of them. She's having a pretty good run here, staying nice and low on her side. A little bit of a, a break with the arms there. You can see some snow kind of flare up. Gilardini holding on to that edge over the German Marion Thies. Here she is at the finish curve. Will she hang on? She does rather easily. 16 hundredths of a second advantage. Her 57.95, the fastest of the heat, and her 156.41, the fastest combined time of the six who have come down the track. Great time for her to get under 58 is a great time on this track and to be newer at this track. She's going to be very happy with that and happy with her day. This is the Kreisel, that entrance, and then staying in the middle of that Kreisel is the key. Not nearly as easy as some of these athletes are making it seem. The pressure that you get, the G-force in this corner is immense. It's very tough to steer in some of the G-force. You can see her putting the toe down, trying to put every little bit of strength that she can onto that track. Two-time World Cup champion Katie Ulander from Breckenridge, Colorado. Her most significant recent results have been a world championship in 2012 in Lake Placid and a second place last year on the test event in Sochi, Russia. Ulander had a concussion before this season. We didn't know how that would affect her. Early results say negatively. Yeah, I mean, another athlete I didn't expect to be this far back down, but with a concussion, we're starting to find a lot more athletes are having these problems. Not easy to uh, be sliding, and certainly not on your face going head first when you know it's hard just to stand and every round light and, and noise. So, testament to her strong will to be on this track, and let's see how she does here today. Ulander, the daughter of a former Major League Baseball player, is an admitted sports junkie, and not just weightlifting, where she tried to qualify for the Olympics, but kiteboarding and snowboarding. She loves speed. She's a daredevil, and she's got a bit of a different style on the sled, as some of the viewers will notice. She typically slides with her legs apart. You don't see all the athletes doing that. It does work for her. She's having a much cleaner run than she did the first go down the track. A little tiny bit of a skid there, but very minor. You can hear again that visor from the pressure on the, the track is going to do it. Again, on the left, it doesn't affect your speed that much if you can stay holding everything together, and she's certainly doing that right now. 1400s in back of Gilardoni right here. So not the makings of a first place run. We hear some skidding there at the finish as well. She does pick up time at the bottom, but not enough. As Coach Tuffy Latour shows his appreciation, behind that applause, there must be a bit of disappointment as Katie Ulander will do no better perhaps than a top 12 or 13 today. And Katie's somebody that's meddled on this track before in World Cup. She's a former world champion. She's going to be disappointed. She's won the World Cup here before. But how tough has that got to be with a concussion? Very recent, happening in Lake Placid not that many weeks ago. It's just amazing that she's actually out here sliding and racing. And she's got to take a little bit of comfort in knowing that, you know, maybe not the result she wanted today, but just to fight through it, that's an impressive feat in itself. And you can see it on her face. She's very disappointed. Katie's a competitor. You know, as you said, she loves that speed, and she's not going to be too happy with today. Two Germans remaining in the field. A little later on, we'll see Anya Huber, the Bavarian. But here is Katarina Heinz, 13th place after run number one. And Germany, why is this nation so deep in all of these sled sports? Two big reasons. A lot of tracks and they start them young. <laughs> and sometimes we want to know the other secrets. They're tough to catch some days, but they start them young. Like you say, they have four tracks, and uh, they just have, you know, so many athletes and, and young kids out there trying to do these sports, and it shows. They have a great pick of some of the top athletes around. Hines with a start time of 5.73. That's the slowest of all of the start times so far. So now it's a question of how well her form is, how well this sled is set up. Which brings this question, Michelle. If you were to weigh athletic performance versus equipment, which weighs more? You know, that's the age-old debate and one that you're never going to get a clear answer on because you really need a bit of both. That's the thing, and uh, especially at this level. Everybody's, you know, on pretty good equipment. Everybody's athletic, but at this level, you need that athletic start because everybody's on good equipment and can drive. So really, I, I'd have, if I had to pick one, I'd go to the athletic uh, at this stage of the game just because everybody's both. so good. But I really think you need both. And it depends on the track. All the tracks are different. So the German falls behind Gilardoni. And Canadian Cassie Horish is coming up in just a moment. 
Well, it is a bit of a pleasant surprise seeing Gilles Ardoni move up several spots. That's one nice thing about the opening you know, race each year. It is. What a surprise. And I spoke to her a little bit earlier at the track. What a nice girl she is and it sounds sort of funny to say girl but I've been in the sport long enough that some of these uh, athletes are a lot younger and you know just nice to see a person that obviously works hard she's got that start you know she's getting that form and starting to get the driving and again Switzerland's such a dominant nation for so many years between Gregor and Maya and just so great to see another athlete coming in a new face who's coming out really hungry and performing super well in her opening race Now we have the Canadian Cassie. Back here in Calgary, the crowd is going wild as we have the Canadian Cassie Horish. The top 10 now set to go here. Run number two of the World Cup opening skeleton race. Cassie's going to be a little disappointed with that start. Here at the Canadian selections, only a few weeks back, she was a lot quicker than that. So she's going to be a little unhappy today. But you know what? She's just debuting, really, since last year. Still working out a bit of those nerves. She just needs to hold it together here. She knows this track. As long as she keeps her lines, she's going to be fine. Paul Rich, a former national volleyball competitor, as well as a track and field 4x100 relay specialist. What a great exit of eight. She had that nice, clean straight. That's going to pick her up some speed. Again, you hear that visor like you do with a lot of the athletes from the pressure. Clean exit. That's going to really help her out a little bit late into the corner. But the straight is quite nice. 1,300 is a lot to make up here in the final portion of the track. It's certainly a track she's familiar with, though. It is. It's a bit uphill here. Ooh, that was a bit high. Wow, how about that? She made up two tenths of a second on what, the last 200 meters? And that just goes to show that exit of Kreisel, that clean straight, it all carries through. And that's what people sometimes forget is you might make a mistake and you're going to see it in a few corners, but you make a corner, you know, you come out clean, that's also going to show up in a few corners. I was trying to be nice by saying 1300 is a lot to make up. I could have been saying she doesn't have a chance, but look at that. She and made up all her. that time down at the bottom. And that shows her experience on this track. She's had numerous runs down here. She knows where to find that extra speed when she needs it. And she did brush the wall there just slightly. You could see it a lot better on this angle, but it was a very minor scraping, and she held her form so nicely through this uphill portion in 14 and just carried it through. Best speed down at the bottom, to no one's surprise, given that margin she made up on the last few curves. Canadians out in front here with 10 remaining, 11 remaining. Australia. Just goes to show you, you always got to, you know, keep your focus because you just never know what's going to happen. From Australia, Lucy Chafer, a veteran in the sport, not one of the faster starters here in the top 50 meters. She just needs to get under that 550, which she did on her first heat. Oh, and an even better start. That, that's a pretty good start time. That's definitely competitive. She's got that nice entrance going here, staying nice and low on the sled. Harley can even really see her face. It's so low to the ice, and that's what you want for aerodynamics. Stay nice and low and relaxed. Just melt into that sled. Her start time, 800 is better than run number one. That is hugely significant as she's opened up a four-tenths of a second lead out of curve eight. Nice form, nice, nice line. Staying nice and calm, just letting the sled run, picking up that speed. Let's see if she can have a good exit out. She takes the tap, but she was able to recover. She didn't skid. She's got to hold that form and keep her speed going, which I see no problem. The lead she's already opened up is immense. Australia's Lucy Chafer will be in first place midway through run number two here in Calgary. Excellent run. So a great showing. That really was a good run. And it's fun to see the Australian win. I mean, there was Emma and Melissa, and Michelle's been there all along, and they never, they never quit. And, and so great for a sliding nation that really came onto the scene in probably about 2003, 2004, you know, to see where they've progressed in, in relatively a short time when you have nations such as Canada, Austria, they've been around forever. Schaefer with the lead, followed by the Canadian and the Swiss. Plenty more to come from Calgary. And the two-minute warning for Maria Orlova. 
So again, thanks so much to all of our viewers around the country. We take a few little uh, breaks to accommodate our television audiences as well. And that's why you sometimes hear Michelle and I start and stop at interesting moments. But thanks so much for your emails. When we get to the first run of the two-man bobsled, we'll read more comments and questions as Olympic gold medalist Steve Messler will join me for the call of the two-man as well as tomorrow's four-man competition. And pleased to bring into the booth Olympic silver medalist Helen Upperton coming up tomorrow with the women's bobsled competition. How much do you miss it? Uh, there's no question. I only just actually announced my retirement in October, and uh, it's, it's never a tough one for athletes. You know, it's in our blood. It's our passion, and even being at the top, I was, ah, oh, I just want to jump on a sled, and, you know, but at the same time, you, you remember some of the reasons why you're, you're done. <laughs> and, uh, but I think for all the athletes, it's, it's, a, it's a tough transition. I mean, again, when something has been such a huge part of your life, and in that speed, it's addicting, you know, to be able to go out there and legally be doing <laughs> the speeds we do. It's a pretty tough thing to give up. After Calgary, we head to Park City, Utah, then to Lake Placid. Then the final five events will be held in Europe. Martin Haven will take over the announcing duties over there. And we hope you join us for as many races as possible to get psyched for the upcoming Olympic Games. Home. They still like you. They still like me. <laughs> We're back. Russia's Maria Orlova kicks off the top half of this draw, the top ten, as we get set for our final sleds here, winding down to Lizzie Arnold of England. Tim Singer and Michelle Kelly here at Canada Olympic Park. This is Maria Orlova of Russia on course, 10th place after run number one. I'm just taking a few little bumps to see there riding the exit. Shouldn't affect her too much. Oh, then we, you know, it's just these little bumps. You can see her legs are coming apart. She's taking little hits. And already we have seen that he has put her behind. Australia's Lucy Chafer took the lead before the commercial break. She's down in the winner's box, and it appears her spot is safe, at least for one more sled. Yeah, again, a late entrance there. You can hear a nice exit out of the Chrysal, but I'm thinking she's already lost a bunch of speed. We'll see it here shortly. Three things that make a sled slow down. I mean, it, it might seem obvious, but there might be little things we don't know about. You know, again, it's all about the speed. Sometimes when you hit the walls, it actually doesn't affect you. It's sometimes what you do after the hit. If you start to move too much on your sled and you put your sled into a skid, which means it starts to go a little bit sideways, it's not on that straight line, all of that's going to affect your speed. Aerodynamics is huge. You can tell on a lot of athletes as they start to get a little bit more tense, they start to lift up, you get that air between their shoulders, their head starts to come up. you got to be as low as possible, almost invisible on that sled to make sure you can get as quick as possible with those aerodynamics. And again, that start, all important for speed. Ten years ago, we covered a World Cup race here in Calgary, and the Canadian women finished first, second, third, and fourth. And Canada Skeleton has rarely looked back because they just keep producing them one year after another. As the Australian has the lead, it's the newest of those Canadian future stars. This is Robin Thompson. What do we need to know about her? Robin's such an amazing person. She's one of the nicest people, quite quiet, but she can be aggressive when she needs to on a sled. And she's really excited to be here. This is her debut. She was a bit nervous before. I had a chance to talk to her and just say, you know what? Don't doubt that you're supposed to be here. You won against an incredible field of Canadians. It's a strong team. You earned your spot on the team. You're here with the best in the world, and you're meant to be here, and just relax and enjoy. Incidentally, Melissa Hollingsworth, the Olympic medalist who finished third on that top four day in Canada, did not qualify initially for this national team for Canada. That shows you how deep things are. She still holds out hope, though, that she'll be back. And that's it. And it was Robin that, uh, that got that spot uh, a 
above Melissa. And, you know, it just shows how strong of a program we have. Everybody's been working so hard on their off-season training as well. Shows our depth. I mean, there's no question Melissa is an amazing slider, and she's going to be back. Speed down at this spot as she has a little bit of an exciting exit. 114.2, that's 71 miles an hour even, and she falls behind Lucy Chafer. Yeah, you could see that leg go up again. We talked about the aerodynamics. Around the finish curve, the Canadian will fall back. No, she'll oh. the lead by a hundredth of a second with eight remaining. Number 82 for Robin Thompson of Canada, first place. Well, she took us by surprise, certainly me. <laughs> I, I did not see that coming. Honestly, I didn't either, but like Cassie before her, the Canadians are finding some speed there in those last few corners, and like, rightfully so. They know this track. They've been down it hundreds of times. You know, the exit here, I really thought it would do a little bit more uh, damage than it, uh, it did. She really held on, and what a way to fight and just hang on to every last hundredth. Because like I say, it comes down to some races, a hundredth is what you need to be out on top. Just great, near perfection. At this point, where she does her little bump, she's crossed that red, you can see yeah, the red see. paint. That's the finish line. So now we get set for another Canadian. <laughs> Wasting no time at the start. Canada's Sarah Reed, her teammate Robin Thompson just took the lead by a hundredth of a second right before the break. This is now the veteran of this Canadian squad, at least until we see Melissa Hollingsworth again, a 535 start. A great start. That was faster by about two hundredths over her first heat. That's what she needs. She's gotten consistently faster over the years on her start, and she's really going to need to lay down a good run here. She's in the lead right now. Last year was a breakout year for Sarah Reed, which included her first ever World Cup victory. That was in the opening race in Lake Placid. She has a huge lead over Thompson right now. And, you know, such a tough thing on a team so filled with depth like the Canadian squad has been for so many years. It's tough that, you know, it took so long for Sarah to have a breakout season. You know, but what a great uh, time to do it, you know, just before the Olympics. She's a great all-around person. Everybody likes Sarah. And it's so great to see that her hard work is finally paying off. 74.8 miles an hour among the fastest we've seen in the second run here. By far the best run of the heat and opening up an advantage of three or four tenths of a second over her teammate, Robin Thompson. Former dancer, spent 11 years as a dancer. You would think that skeleton's a big removal from being on the dance floor, but really it takes a lot of agility and stamina to do both of those. And body awareness, you know, I think whether uh, a lot of the athletes come from a gymnastics background like myself or dance like Sarah, it's that awareness of your body, which is so crucial when you're on a sled and you're trying to just do every little bit to steer the sled, stay focused, and it's those minor movements. And you have to, everything's so quick, you need to be so in tune with your body. And coming from a sport of dancing, you'd have to be so in tune with what your body's doing at any given time. Oh, you right now, Okay. Hi. <laughs> Janine Flock of Austria. Seventh place after run number one. Checking out last year's World Cup standings. She was much further back, so this is a great way to roar out of the new season. Twelfth overall in the World Cup last year, and her best finish was a fourth. That was on her home track in Eagles. And it's great. There hasn't been a lot of uh, Austrian women in the sport, so it's nice to see one here on the World Cup. It's been uh, long time coming and uh, nice to see that she's already been starting off really strongly she's got a fast start which is going to help her again it's under that 550 but we did just see sarah do a 535 so she's going to have a little bit of uh, catch up here on the track to stay nice and clean and a really early correction it wasn't as bad as say what we saw from john daly in the men's race but you just when you're not having that fast speed at the top is when you need to be perfect and especially when you're getting down to the last final sliders where there's going to be you know less and less mistakes being made again there we see here on that corner eight hitting that right wall not getting off the corner in time which is going to affect your speed on the straight speed is not bad 71.5 that's about the same as sarah reed all things being equal sure well she's making up a little here, she is actually it's, a little, it's pretty close it's going to come down to these final few corners so to the finish janine flag does not hang on stays 1200s and back of the canadian with six remaining here in calgary
Love the silver helmet. It's very space-like. <laughs> I know now in uh, the days you're going to see more and more helmets and sleds that are painted up. It's really interesting to see what, uh, how the athletes are showing their personalities through their helmets. Six remaining, including three world champions. Shelley Rudman coming up in a moment. The first of two from Great Britain. Speaking of helmets, there's another one all painted up. Defending world champion Shelly Rudman, 2006 Olympic silver medalist, now on course here in Calgary. Sixth place after run number one, but only two hundredths of a second out of the top five. This is also a really crucial run for Shelly. She wants to move up. She's used to being up on that leaderboard. She wants to make a few more strides closer to that top of the podium. Olympic medalist, world champion. Shelly told me this is, without a doubt, her final season of World Cup. Oh, no, no, I, I stand corrected. Kristen Bromley said last year, her partner, Shelly said she'll take it Olympics by Olympics, but leaning towards right. retirement. Been a great ambassador for the sport in a country that really has such success. She has, and what a wonderful straight that was. She's coming to cry, again. you hear that visor from the pressure. See if she can hold on for the exit. Just a slight tap, that's not gonna hurt her any. Now she just needs to carry that speed through. Holding on to that down here at the bottom. Let's see what kind of speed we get. 75.3, that is good speed. She will hold on to the lead here. She does. Best run of the heat, 57.41. 13 hundredths of an advantage over Sarah Reed. So Great Britain's Shelley Rudman. She went to the 2006 Olympics. Her goal was a top 10 result. She walked away with a silver medal. And she has a top five likely here today. I think she more than exceeded her, uh, yeah, expectations. <laughs> her expectations there. And again, great. This is an athlete who comes from a nation that does not have a sliding track in their backyard. They have to travel to do their sliding. Shelly's a mom, you know, so it's never easy when you're trying to have both a sporting life and also uh, a family life. It's a real testament to these athletes and their passion to be out here doing what they love. <laughs> Greeted by Sarah Reed and her partner, Kristen Bromley. And now we get to the top five. 2008 and world champion Anja Huber. Anja from the Bavarian section of Germany, Berchtesgaden, right next to Salzburg, Austria. But it was on the other side of Germany in Altenburg where she just dominated the field at the 2008 World Championships. She's very steady from top to bottom. The start, the form, the speed, the sled. <laughs> And like we said, you need a bit of it all, and she's got the start, she knows how to drive, and the Germans always have top equipment. She just needs to relax into this run and really just let the sled gain every bit of speed that she can. Seven hundreds ahead of Rudman at that start split, and her advantage was just two hundreds heading into the run. It's going to be an exciting uh, time down the track here. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out, but already she's starting to open that lead a little bit. Super smooth, you can hear just nice, quiet on the track. Not a lot of noise, not a lot of movement. Anya, who works for the German Bobsled and Skeleton Federation during the off-season, also spent a lot of that off-season preparing for her wedding next summer. So now she said she's put that all aside. She won't even think about it until March. A lot of these athletes getting married. It's uh, an interesting year for them. She's having a good run. It's getting close. It's going to really come down to these really last corners. Really close. One hundredth of a second her advantage. Speed, 75.7. That's good speed. But she falls back behind Shelly Rudman. Four hundredths of a second back. So a little wince from Coach Jens Mueller. Anya Huber hoping to stay in the top six, but she cannot hold her spot for the time being. And a little surprising to see at the bottom there, you could actually see Anya bend a bit of her elbows, which isn't uh, something you're used to seeing. And again, with being so close, when we're talking hundreds, every little bit of aerodynamics is really important. And she's not going to be too happy about a few of those little things. But overall, I mean, it was a great run. It's just, again, at this level of competition, every little bit counts. Great look at the head at a bit of an angle, trying to keep it as close as she can to the ice without scraping the ice. Well, nine years ago, oh, yeah. the nation of Australia, as we see the greeting there, How are you doing? the nation of Australia, which had no real sledding history in skeleton, they made a commitment 
They were going to commit to the sport of skeleton. They actually hired an American, Terry Holland, who developed some athletes, including Michelle Steele. Steele won a World Cup bronze medal a couple of years after that in a scale downfield in Japan. But now she is the class, or among the class of the sport. And an interesting thing to notice with her, she used both hands to push. You're gonna see most of the athletes are using that one-handed technique, which was invented by a Canadian before the very first Olympics in 2002. Is that Jeff Bain? Uh, no, it was actually Pascal. And uh, it, it, what's really interesting is, she not only uses the two-handed technique, which really, to most people, is unheard of nowadays, but is so fast with it, and that's what's so that's very impressive. Amazing. It's amazing. As I said, could we have a reverse revolution? Might some of these athletes go back to the two-hand? Well, you know, I, I don't think it's going to happen. When Pascal Richard did develop the push, uh, it revolutionized. It just made a lot of the speeds a lot quicker, which is why it's so rare to see an athlete use two hands. But it works for her. She's having a good run right now. Maintaining the consist consistent three-tenths of a second advantage. She made some corrections up top. Now we're going to see if that's going to come back to bite her. She's lost a tenth of a second on that lead. She has. She's got a bit of a lead. It's going to just depend right here. To the finish. Hangs on by 1,300s. Lost a quarter of a second. Nice space there. Nice <laughs> that's Eric Bernardis, the American now coaching the Australians. But a great showing for Michelle Steele. What a great way to start a new season when you come in with so many question marks. And so nice. You can just see the small, you know, even through the visor, how happy she is. And what a great run. That's so great, you know, to see Michelle back up, you know, in the top where she belongs. She's such a great slider and a great person. Another athlete that just got married this summer. And she's going to be so thrilled with that run. Here's the look at the two-handed start, and she, I mean, for lack of a better word, she makes it happen. She does, and for, you know, just a slight athlete, you don't think there's going to be a lot of power in those legs, but she certainly does, and what a great start. She had to do a quick correction, though, here. I actually thought she might have popped the groove a little bit. She did, yeah. And, uh, you know, that shows her experience that you can actually still have that error, hold it together, and then have a great run like she did. Well, the lone competitor trying to break into this English-speaking leaderboard, this is Elena Nikitina of Russia. Like Dom Parsons in the men's race, this is a surprise potential podium finisher. Really is, but look at her start. Expect another 518 start record. She not record. only bettered her start record, <laughs> she, she destroyed it, a 518. I wow. think there must be something in that water they're drinking over there. I need to get some of that. <laughs> That's so impressive. The, the, if, if Alexander Trechikov is the Russian rocket, <laughs> she's the Russian rocket. I think so. That is so impressive, especially on a second heat. Now she just needs to try and hold her form to try to keep that lead. She's a bit of a newer slider, not going to have the experience, but a start like that, wow. You know, great straight we just saw. That's such an amazing entry into Kreisel. Let's see if she can hold the exit. If she can hold it, Michelle, they will just chalk it up to inexperience. <laughs> if she can hold on to the lead, everyone is going to be very astonished. You know, but she's holding it. It's going to be close. It's coming down to the wire. So far, she's holding it. Let's check this out. Who will win the World Cup medal? It will be the Russian by two hundredths of a second ahead of Michelle Steele. <laughs> What a great outing for this young slider. That is so great. I mean, that start, 5.18, that's times that the men are pushing. You know, that's just such an amazing thing to see how the, spart the start of his, you know, in our sport has really progressed. Oh. She, she's not oh, even she's sure excited. yet. she's yeah, excited. That's say, so great. She's not sure how to react to success <laughs> yet because she's never had it. But good for her to get a medal. That, you know, we still don't know the color, but we know she's got one, and that is so amazing. Way to go. What an opening starting race for this athlete. It's not a, it's a bit of a surprise, but she was coming on at the end of last season with a victory in Eagles and maybe more significantly a fifth place in Sochi. So welcome to the top of the skeleton scene for Nicotina. Dark horse maybe, I think. Yeah, and we'll get a lighter horse <laughs> as the season moves along if she has those results. Noelle Pikes pace. She's had a handful of busyness this past off season. The mother of two, she's been soliciting sponsorship, she's been training, she's been battling in injuries, but the American from Orem, Utah is a former world champion and the winner of the Sochi World Cup last season. And she's a fighter. You always have to be paying attention when Noelle hits the starting line. 
and just again, you know, such a testament, a mother of two, and yet is one of the best athletes in this sport. Just shows how hard she's worked in the off season. And has had misfortune during her Olympic years in the past, including after coming off of a World Cup title in 2005. She was injured at the start of the 06 season, missed most of that season did not produce the results she wanted at the 2010 Olympics. So all the eggs in one basket this year. You know, and, and right now for a lot of athletes, you know, they're trying to take it race by race, but that Olympics is always in the back of your mind. She's having a great run so far, picking up time. You know, as an athlete that can drive and find time in just the most amazing spots on a track when she's not one of the fastest starters out there. That's, this is why she won the St. Moritz race, the world championship running away. It was opening up that speed at the bottom. She just far and away distanced herself from the field in the last 10 curves. And so amazing. You look at that start time and you think, you know, just like Marion Thies in some of the tracks, how are they pulling that speed out? But she's just letting that sled run, letting it do its thing. You know, she's going to be super stoked. This is an athlete who could barely walk a few days ago, had some problems with some discs, an old injury, and good for her to come back and just way to start her season. That's so awesome. Such a such a great person. You can see her personality there. Posted, She's super she happy. posted a picture on Facebook on Wednesday. She looked like death warmed over, lying on her bed with, <laughs> with the herniated discs flaring up again. And here she is now, at least a second. And has she put the pressure on Lizzie Arnold? There's no question. There wasn't that big of a gap. There was only four hundredths between them on the very first heat. So I mean, that's definitely, I mean, she just laid that run down. And it's definitely going to put some pressure on this athlete that she is going to, Elizabeth is going to have to have an amazing run to catch what Noelle just put down. An up and coming Russian in second place, a former world champion from the United States in the lead. And now the final sled from Great Britain. This is Lizzie Yarnold. She's fast at the start. People have been expecting big things from her for a couple of years now. And this Olympic year, how will it start? A good start time of 538. And that's quicker than her first teeth, so she's definitely really going after her right now. She just needs to relax into that sled, really try to let it run just like Noelle did. Pick up every little bit of speed you can. Nice advantage of 3,300s, but of course the American had all of her speed advantage at the bottom. And that's what can happen with this Calgary track, is you can carry that speed. And if you can pick it up in the bottom, where a lot of athletes are starting to lose their time and momentum, it's really going to propel you. Very nice exit out of eight. Really nice. You can this could see be a little, bit of a, a little bit of a tap. They're going into the entrance. You can see a bit of that ice flying up at the cameras. It's down to two tenths of a second. Bit of a hit there. We are looking at maybe 12 hundredths at this point. No, two hundredths. Wow, she some well time. for the American now. As she falls behind, will Lizzie Arnold now hold on to the top two? She should, but it will be American. Wow. No like this pace, <laughs> capturing the World Cup season opener and picking up where she left off with the victory last year in Sochi. This is going to be such a thrilling year. Looking at all these athletes, they're coming out here to put out their best and put their mark on the, the season already. And this has just been such a great sliding today for Noel. Again, an athlete who could barely walk a few days ago. What an accomplishment to come out and win this first World Cup race. There is a look at the winner, Noel Pikes Pace. Woo! We can't <laughs> stay. Thanks, you guys. Love you, USA. Woo! Thanks, sponsors. Thanks, everybody, family, friends. Love you guys. <laughs> As we said, it's been a busy time for Noelle Pikes Pace, but she relies on her sponsors, her family, yeah. <laughs> and her friends, without whom she couldn't be in this position. So, American Noelle Pikes Pace, her second consecutive World Cup victory dating back to last season, and a great way to start this brand new Olympic season. She really picked that time up in the bottom. Just super impressive. Held it on all the way through the end. She is one happy lady right now. Flower ceremony, interviews, and much more still ahead here in Calgary. Final standings, Pika's pace ends up being a relatively easy win. Just a sensational second run for the American. The Russian, Elena Nikitina in third. Two Canadians as well in the top 10. A look at the rest of the leaderboard as the top 20 all garner World Cup points here. A long season ahead as they try to pace themselves towards the Olympic Games. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes before we rejoin our TV audience and Michelle, 
pacing yourself. I guess that is a challenge in an Olympic year because you want to storm out of the gate. For some of them, they want to qualify for their teams, but uh, you don't want to burn out too soon. Well, that's always the tricky thing on an Olympic year is that every event you have to put out your best because you're trying to get those points you're fighting within your team for spots with other nations for spots but at the same time you want to still try and have your peak performance coming right at those olympic games so it's a real fine balance but most of these athletes they've been around numerous years they know how the season works they know how their bodies work and they know how to make sure that they're still putting out their best but they're able to recover and keep on getting better as the season progresses Noel Pike is paced with a victory. If you're to pick one or two tracks that Noel's not going to win on, Calgary might be one of those. You know, I actually wouldn't uh, say that. You, you know, want? from okay. previous experience, uh, even without the start, I mean, she can drive. And, and on this track, she's always one of those athletes that can find speed on tracks. And she proved that today. And I really think that any track, Noel is quite a threat. Clearly, she's proving that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the situation here is Noel Pika's pace of the United States capturing the gold medal. Going to be saying goodbye to some of our networks down the road. We certainly hope you'll join us for World Cup action along the way as we make the push on the road to Sochi. Noel Pika's pace from the United States, the winner here in Calgary. World Cup number one is in the books. As day turns to night here in Calgary, it is the dawn of a new season on the Skeleton Tour. And for American Noel Pikes Pace, garnering 225 points with the victory. Lizzie Arnold in second, Russian Elena Nikitina in third place, and Australia's Michelle Steele, a nice top four finish. Katie Ulander of the United States back in 13th place. As usual, it's a leaderboard littered with Canadians, Americans, British sliders to go along with the Russians and the Australians. The flower presentation now down at the finish. Flowers in. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And the interviews coming up in just a moment from Calgary. Noel Pika's pace. After the 2006 Olympics, she retired from the sport to have her first child. After the 2010 Olympics, she retired from the sport again. She had had enough, but now she's back, getting ready for her third Olympic Games. And she's doing it in high fashion to open up this season. Tim Singer back here in Calgary, Canada, where the south of the border nation, the United States, celebrates a season opening victory in the name and face of athlete Noel Pikus Pace. The top three are standing by down at the finish with John Morgan. The winners of the first Feastman World Cup Women's Skeleton event of 2013 14, and Alana, your, your first medal 
You must be happy. Да, очень счастлива. В радости нет предела. Я старалась. Вот что получилось. Very happy. I really tried hard, and then finally here's the result. Congratulations. Thank you. Now over to Elizabeth Yonald, silver medal. You, uh, I know you didn't win the gold, but you got to be happy first time out of the season. Yeah, it's not too bad a start, is it, to the Olympic season? So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. It was a tough race. I mean, congrats to everyone in Noel. She was exceptional. So, you know, it was a great race. Okay, now to Noel Pika's pace. We left Sochi last year, last race of the year. You won. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are to start off. Uh, are, are your sights to win as much as you can before? Or are you going to try and pace yourself into the Olympics? Um, or are you just letting? Honestly, it's just hard going through a summer. It's hard to come back. We don't really know where we compare, so it's just to come out here and to race and give it my best. On her second round, she. It's going to be tough and. So great racing. Now, could you feel? Could you feel you had a good second run? I could feel the speed. My head got sucked down in Kreisel, so I knew it was fast coming out of there. I just didn't know how fast it was. Obviously, fast enough, ladies. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! All right. Thanks very much, John. Well, Michelle Kelly, obviously, she is the World Cup leader with one victory in one race, but is she the de facto <laughs> Olympic favorite in your mind? I mean, you gotta, you gotta really think that. I mean, Noelle's such a great slider, so consistent, and she won the test event. I think right there that says, you know, she's one of the favorites. It'll be fun to watch as the season moves along, but certainly America's Noelle Pikas Pace, a world champion and a former World Cup champion, has made her statement that she may be on her way to an Olympic championship as well. Stick around, we've got two-man bobsled coming up a little later today from Calgary. Until then, for Michelle Kelly and all of us here at Canada Olympic Park, I'm Tim Singer. Thanks so much for joining us. Noel Pikes Pace, the winner of the World Cup opener.